Now, um, there's been a little bit more information that's come out about um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Um, by the way, that is my personal favorite Sonic game on the Sega Genesis of the 16-bit uh, era. Um, it was Sonic 2 until I played Sonic 3 the way it was meant to be played as a part of Sonic and Knuckles combined to be one big long adventure. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to get that or to play that game all the way through and just played, you know, Sonic 3 as one game and Sonic and Knuckles as another game, they weren't meant to be played that way. Um, but when you play them all the way through, it's fantastic. Uh, they're so much better together than separate games. So the reason they had to do that, and this is pretty well known and well documented, um, there were obviously size limitations on the Sega Genesis cartridges. They just simply could not fit that massive a, of a game on a single cartridge. So they, what they did, and by the way, apparently they were underneath uh, time restraints to get the game out in time to coincide with a McDonald's promotion, um, which is an unfortunate side effect with a lot of, you know, timing and things that we get and things getting rushed out or or you know held back because they have to tie in with other business deals but that's just how the corporate world works um and i do remember those toys i used to have the sonic launcher and then the launcher went missing and i was so sad it was like a little 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 two-piece thing sonic was one piece a bunch of like fire was like the other piece to i guess represent how fast he was going hit the button on top, spring-loaded, he'd, you know, go across on wheels. And it was, it was, it was neat. Um, Tails also had, like, a little flying helicopter thing. He'd pull a ripcord, and he'd fly up. Oh, I like those. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they did for Tails. Knuckles was stupid. He was, like, in a cloud, almost like he was riding a Lakitu from Mario. <laughs> and as you rolled the, the cloud, his little claws would, like, just kind of go up and down. It was dumb. Um, and I think Robotnik was just like a wind-up toy that would go. But I mean, back then, you know, in the 90s, like, it didn't take much. I mean, Happy Meal toys are stupid nowadays. How often do they do Hot Wheels and Barbies? Like, it's all the time. But anyway, enough of that. I did like when they did Pokemon. I have three of those McDonald toys. Yeah, I guess they did do a McDonald or a uh, Pokemon one property for toys um so they had to get it out in time of course um and instead of just developing a new cartridge with more memory that probably would have cost more they decided to break the game up into two separate releases and i want to say that sonic and knuckles was only released about six months later like it did not take long for them to get both games out so that everyone could, could play um, but the games lock on, they play together. Um, you can, and it was weird too, because when they advertised it, they advertised Sonic and Knuckles as a whole new game, which all the assets from Sonic 3 carry over into Sonic and Knuckles because it was supposed to be, you know, one game. And they advertised it as, hey, you could play as Knuckles in Sonic 3. Also, you could play as Knuckles in Sonic 2. And, like, that wasn't even the main draw for you to get the game. It's basically, it should have almost been called Sonic 3 Part 2. Almost. That would have been dumb. I, I prefer Sonic and Knuckles. But the way they uh, advertised it kept people like me from realizing, hey, this actually is one big, long, flowing adventure instead of just having Sonic 3 and then Sonic 3.5. Um, so there was that. Now, apparently, the way Sega used to work and if you are a younger person, this may come as news to you, but Sega used to make hardware. They had, uh, their most popular system, of course, was the Genesis. And apparently the relationship that the software teams had with the hardware teams was very, that they worked together. Um, software could basically say, hey, we can't make this work with this hardware that we currently have out. Make it so that it can work. Like, give us something extra. So what the hardware team came up with was the lock-on cartridge. 
it's never been done before since I wouldn't count Game Genie or or Game Sharks or any of those that the cartridge plugs into and then plugs into your system because those are just hacks. But this was something completely new that took two games and combined them into one. And we never saw that again. Um, and apparently that's what they came up with for um, Sonic 3 as a way for it to get it to work as one solid game. Have you ever played either Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles? I think I did play Sonic 3. Um, I can't remember exactly. I was I was really little when I played it. Um, it started out like Sonic was riding on uh, Tails' tornado and they were mm -hmm. flying into a jungle. And then like Sonic and Tails, like they're in a forest. And then like Knuckles comes up and punches them and then like takes all the emeralds and runs away. Yep. Was that Sonic 3? That is Sonic 3. I played Sonic 3. Okay. And Sonic and Knuckles doesn't really have much of an opening um, other than you see the Death Egg crash down on Knuckles Island, which is interesting because if you play if you play Sonic 3 by itself, you go to the launch pad zone where the Death Egg is going to going to be launching from and you stop it in mid launch, you actually make it you make it plummet back down to uh, the planet surface but it explodes in the sky if you have sonic and, uh, sonic 3 and, uh, i'm sorry if you have sonic and knuckles plugged into sonic 3 or vice versa you know what i mean if they're one game you just see it fall and then it fades to black and that's where the opening screen of sonic and knuckles comes into play it just crashes down the way that game progresses i'll talk about this a little bit what I loved about old games that weren't in 3D, sometimes they would do really, really clever things with the graphics. Um, Donkey Kong does this for Game Boy. Um, Donkey Kong for Game Boy is completely different from any version of Donkey Kong, other of uh, you know other versions of Donkey Kong that are out there. It's not just four levels and then they repeat. Once you beat the four levels, this whole new world opens up. Like and there's like eight or nine worlds to go through it plays like a typical mario game but it's a more like a puzzle action adventure platform game yeah um as you get close to the end uh the last place is donkey kong's tower and as you get to the second to last world you can see it in the distance and then as you keep playing uh you'll you kind of you, you you kind of see it on the world map that you're working your way there. Then when you play like the last four levels of that map, it actually shows up in the levels as a little part of the background. Then it gets a little bit bigger, like you're getting closer to it. And I love things like that. And that's actually what um, Sonic Three and Knuckles does with the Death Egg. Like as you get to Lava Reef Zone, you can actually like see it in the background, like crashed in, like because it had a face on it. That was always like really intimidating to me as a kid. It basically imagine the Death Star with a face on it, with a mustache, a mustached face. That makes it a little less intimidating. <laughs> but still, kind of like the eyes were like yeah, really really wide. Um, so that really uh, got to me when I was a kid. But you would you'd see it crashed in there, and then later in the level you see it actually start to like rise up. But like now it's a little bit higher, and there's some light bleeding through it. Just you would appreciate it as as an artist, you know, graphic design um, alone. Um, but those are those are my memories of the game. It's fantastic. There's actually character development in the game, which is not, you know, can't really say that much about platformers <laughs> of the age. Um, so that was really neat. Um, but I think this is a little interesting. Uh, revelation about how the software and hardware teams worked which i don't think most video game companies especially today you know don't work it's basically like hey here's the hardware software team you make it work and maybe that explains the existence of 32x or sega cd but i don't know i thought it was a cool story for one of my one of my favorite all-time sonic games <laughs>